Howdy, y'all. Tumbleweed here. Thanks kindly to my readers, and especially my growing cadre of fans, for buying my latest Tumbleweed Saga, Noasis Blood, Texans Prepare for War. Now, Noasis Blood, it's not about vampires, but rather the blood spilled during the crucial events and accompanying dynamics sweeping southern Texas during the time leading up to the war between the states. Action, grit, passion, they all converge at Little Noasis Town, Texas. Noasis Blood continues Texas Ranger Luke Dunn's epic adventures as he delivers justice across the Texas Noasis Strip of 1860. By way of offering y'all a taste of my fourth tumbleweed saga, allow me to share a piece of chapter one. Now Luke's six foot three height had earned him the nickname Long Luke from some, but he was partial to the name the Comanche had given him, Ghost Who Rides. His ruggedly handsome Irish face framed a well-tended, fiery mustache. Seven years had now passed since he'd immigrated from County Kildare back in Ireland. Riding the prairies of the Noasis Strip had etched squint lines beside his crystal blue eyes. He was by any measure an imposing figure of manhood. This was the man whom Melissa had found true love and a blessed marriage. It took the utmost of her strong, feisty nature to complement Luke and ensure marital harmony. With Luke frequently off rangering, she bore the bulk of the hefty responsibilities that went along with running a growing ranch. Their family seemed to be grow, growing faster than double-struck lightning, having quickly been blessed with twin boys and a daughter. But it was also the way it was on the Texas frontier, as large families ensured the ultimate cohesion that marked building civilized communities, where diseased, dangerous critters, hostile Indians, and lawbreakers tended to create numerous challenges to life. Importantly, civilization was winning. Luke was faced with a critically important decision concerning becoming a special agent Texas Ranger under Rip Ford, commander of the Texas Rangers throughout the state. His thoughts turned to his personal conflict over being a rancher and a family man versus lawman. He was ever more fully understanding the nature of the Longhorns, and the Longhorns never shot back. As his ranching skills had developed, he couldn't help but appreciate how the qualities of being a Texas Ranger paralleled many of those of being a cowboy. Both professions demanded powers of observation, alertness, loyalty, most importantly, resourcefulness. In addition, he developed critically important skills such as excellent marksmanship and becoming a fine horseman. Plus, he was considered reasonably intelligent. He thought on the psychology of managing longhorns and likened dealing with these sometimes unpredictable beeves to wrangling with lawbreakers. Indeed, the similarities he brought to ranching and bringing justice to the Noasis Strip made his conflict between the two roles all the more challenging to choose between, if in fact the choice was necessary. Alyssa looked deeply into her husband's eyes as she stared across the table. The aroma of bacon, eggs, and biscuits tended to offer the lingering atmosphere that tempted folks to sit back and enjoy a conversation no matter how deep. She thought she had him figured out, then he'd go and surprise her. They'd had this conversation before. Perhaps he'd work out the answer before somebody got lucky and took his life. Took him from her. She didn't cut much to the idea of widowhood at age 18. I'm still sort of on the fence, Lisa. Lisa was Luke's affectionate name for Alyssa. She, in turn, called him Lucas. My heart is here. I love you. I fully enjoy the family and the ranch life at Heaven's Gate, but my inner sense of justice calls me to be a Texas Ranger and protect what we and our neighbors have built. There was always the but part. Alyssa understood how important it was that Luke make his decisions on his own for whatever the right reasons were. He needed to be fully happy as a happy man would be a happy husband, by extension, a happy family. She understood his passion for law and justice, and uh, though she yearned to keep him ever near, she dared not share her latest news with him just yet, that the, she was pretty sure she was pregnant with her fourth child. You've got to make the decision, Lucas. You've always made good decisions, love, so you know you'll support whatever you decide. In a way, Luke wished she'd tell him to give up the ranchers. It would be very easy for him to fully commit to ranching and home life. But would he be truly happy? Would it totally fulfill him? I hope that grabbed y'all. 
I do urge you to put the Tumbleweed Sagas on your list of must-reads. In addition to the newly released Noesis Blood, you all have been treated thus far to three Tumbleweed Sagas. Noesis Justice, Noesis Reprise, and Noesis Deceit. And my next Tumbleweed Saga will be here before you know it. I also invite you all to experience Nicholas Dunn, The Making of a Texas Legend. The biography I wrote about the life of my great-great-grandfather, a true Texan, who immigrated from Ireland and became legendary in helping tame the Noesis Strip. Oh, and keep in mind, there are three more Tumbleweed Sagas coming, and more. All of my books from Defiance Press and Publishing are available online in print, e-audio, or e-book from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, other sellers, and directly from DefiancePress.com. Do curl up in a comfy place. Let your imagination come alive with the Tumbleweed Sagas. Enjoy a cup of coffee or maybe a sip of a glass of wine or, hey, something more potent. Let tales of the Old West inspire you. Hopefully, my brand will grab you and keep you. And especially, y'all be sure to read, stay friendly, and y'all do take care. <laughs>